Hello? All I have to say is our partner is going to shock the world because he is none other than the Shock Master! Ah! The shock master. <laughs> Minus five stars! The Resident Evil 3 Remake is a bad game. It's bad! Can we please just acknowledge that it's bad? Everybody keeps calling this game disappointing, which is just an attempt to sugarcoat the truth. The game's bad, the game's bad, the game's bad. Not only is it a step down from the RE2 remake in every conceivable way, it's a step down from the original RE3 in every conceivable way. Hell, I'll even go one further. It's a step down from Clock Tower 3. I mean, literally, it's down one clock tower. I was going to try and be fair about this by saying some good things about it first, but it turns out I don't care. This game sucks the shit out of my butt. And it's also totally full of shit. Like a butt. A butt that also sucks. I complained about the RE2 remake not having the proper B scenarios, but at least it had a complete A scenario. It's one thing to fumble a remake of a game with four story campaigns, but Resident Evil 3 only had one. And they couldn't even get that right. It feels like half the game is missing. Where are the branching paths? Where's the clock tower? Where's the park? Why does the city section only feel like it lasts half an hour? Oh wait, I know. Because it only lasts half an hour. Now maybe my recollection is a tad senile, but I seem to remember Resident Evil 3 requiring me to navigate an intricate map of detailed alleyways under the constant threat of an unrelenting foe. This game technically has all that, but like the Shelbyville versions? And the Nemesis fucking sucks. How do you mess up the Nemesis? Literally the only thing anyone remembers from Resident Evil 3, Nemesis. More on him in a bit, but first I really gotta drive home how lame these environments are. Not just compared to the original, but compared to the RE2 remake, which did a stellar job recreating and reimagining every iconic screen of its source material. I remember those environments, because they were lovingly rendered with grisly detail and cinematically presented in dynamic camera angles that stuck with me forever. In remaking RE2, Capcom seemed self-aware of that, so they didn't fuck with it too much. They recreated almost everything exactly, but with scary new graphics and lighting. Not so here. Again, I can remember every screen of RE3 Nemesis for the same reasons I just mentioned, but almost none of them are accurately recreated here. In fact, it's like they didn't even try. The environments and recreation of the source material aren't the only ways in which this game is a bizarrely huge step down from last year's RE2 remake. It's like they saw my original not a review and made this one bad on purpose to prove to me how good I had it the first time. Well, alright then. Mission accomplished. I don't know how else you explain the complete and utter lack of horror in RE3. And what I mean by horror is not scares, although the game also lacks those. I mean any attempt via directing or presentation to unnerve the player in any real way. RE2 pulled this off frequently and organically. That is a creepy game especially in the early half. Walking down those dark hallways in the police station felt tense and foreboding. That game could get more genuine scares out of a single regular zombie than this one manages out of hordes of 20 zombies or even the nemesis himself. Don't worry, I'm getting to him. What the hell happened to the zombies? Why do they suck now? Shooting them does not feel impactful at all, despite them taking less hits to kill, as if they heard my bullet sponge complaints last time and overcorrected by making them out of paper. Most of the gore effects are missing and they don't seem to react to body shots at all. It's like you're fighting holograms. Despite retaining none of their resiliency from the last game, they have managed to retain all of their cocksucking, annoying, douchebag, bullshit behavior. Once again, they still limbo about with the limber lumbars of a broken wiener dog, while juking and jiving like a jive honky at a honky tonk jukebox, and bobbing and weaving like a boxer weaving a bread basket with a needle and a box of thread. Once again, they love to play possum and grab your ankles with absolutely zero visual indication to differentiate between the dead dead and the undead playing dead. Once again, every time a zombie grabs you, the camera swings around wildly, disorienting the player and more often than not causing you to blindly careen into another zombie as soon as you regain control. I have more, but this topic bores me, so let's move on to complaining about the Nemesis. Long before Wesker was brought back with kitty cat eyes and retconned into Bond villain Sephiroth, the Nemesis was THE big bad of Resident Evil, the final boss of what was then a trilogy and he represented the ultimate evolution of all the horrors that had come before. 
Not just a hulking brute, but a nimble and intelligent monster who could wield firearms, strategize, talk, and hold grudges. This menacing pile of Matrix meat was unique among the other mindless killing machines feasting on whatever they see. Nemesis killed out of a sense of sheer malice, hatred, and revenge. He was specifically after you and the other STARS members. That's all he cared about. He's bad, he's cool, he's nobody's fool, and he hates you. He's basically the Mantar with better promo skills. Back in 99, the Nemesis was scary because he was like nothing else in these games. He was relentless and mean. He didn't awkwardly meander his way towards you to do some clunky attacks. He ran at you full speed like a high school bully on cocaine and not even a loading screen could offer sanctuary. He'd follow you into the bathroom just to give you a swirly. Hell, when I was a kid, I couldn't even take a piss without Nemesis sneaking up behind me and banging my head against the urinal like D'Angelo Bailey. But in the remake, he's more like a fat nerd with a crush too shy to actually approach you. You can literally watch him standing pathetically outside the window like a John Hughes movie. Look at this! I'm just effortlessly dodging his attacks like Cassius fucking Clay, and even though I'm armed with little more than the equivalent of a Nintendo Zap Gun, this fuckboy doesn't stand a duck's chance in Duck Hunt. This is embarrassing. He's such a weak bitch that he poses no actual threat, and when he does show up to give chase, you can put him down with a single grenade. He's like the Shockmaster, with worse promos. Here I am, sitting back to this thing, who's gonna introduce me, right? right? I'm waiting out there, there's millions of people, I know it's going on my head, my hands, my hands are sweating, I got all goosebumps, you know? And all of a sudden, people start yelling and screaming, boom, boom! All these explosions, I can't find the door, get out of the stage where I'm supposed to be! Boom, I made my own door! Fell down on my face, hat falls off, what? Oh, there. Hey, you know, everybody's talking about it, okay? There's also nothing even remotely dynamic or unpredictable about him anymore. Instead of showing up whenever he wants, he's now relegated to very specifically scripted encounters, and only at one comically brief section does he even try to do any actual stalking. Somehow, they got this right just a year ago with Mr. X, who wasn't even that cool in the original RE2. So there is no excuse for this level of failure when it comes to the objectively more important to the series and way cooler nemesis. To be honest, Mr. X's constant harassment did little more than irritate me in the RE2 remake, but I would have welcomed that from the Nemesis because that's the entire point of RE3. Instead, this lame, neutered, on-rails, set-piece version of Nemesis comes off like a huge doofus and a step down from Mr. X, which is all kinds of wrong. Just look at this fucking goof Mr. X. He looks like the Monsters University school shooter. The Nemesis should not be less scary than Mr. X, but he somehow is, even though Mr. X is an objectively dumber and stupider sack of shit who walks like he's holding in a loose turd and doesn't even give enough of a dump to pick up the pace in a high-speed chase. One more thing about new Nemesis, he looks like shit. Am I seriously the only one who noticed that he's been hit by an ugly train? I mean, he wasn't exactly Miss America before, but at least he looked cool. He had a certain industrial goth thing going on with the oddly elaborate leather coat. Sort of like a creature feature couture. The weird veiny tubes poking out of his shoulders made him seem alien and grotesque, with a permanent gritted snarl and one hateful white eye, all topped off with these haphazard stitches and staples holding his head together, which really completes the look of a slapped together abomination by a desperate and vengeful umbrella. Almost like they were so focused on creating a tyrant to annihilate stars that they didn't stop to consider just how dangerous and out of control this particular creation would be. He's a Frankenstein for the modern age, a towering behemoth of leftover parts that is both recognizably intelligent and hideously inhuman. But all that's thrown out the window here. What the fuck is this goofy looking shit? First of all, his rad leather coat has been replaced with some Nia Jax looking garbage bag, as if they forgot to give him pants and sent him out there with his yucky dong swinging, so he had to cover his shame with whatever he could find lying around. And his face just looks downright derpy. <laughs> with his little beady eye poking out from under all this. What is this? Foreskin? Like I said, the staples and stitches didn't just look cool, they made sense, and they implied things about his creation. What exactly is this gross mass of carved up grown over skin patches supposed to imply? That he does backyard wrestling on the side? He looks like he's wearing a blindfold made out of Dusty Rhodes' forehead meat. Why would they make him like this? Umbrella would have had to want him blind as a mole rat. 
which, now that I think about it, he also bears an uncanny resemblance to. Even his previously imposing Cenobite Batman jawline has been elongated like a cartoon bad guy, like Robbie Rotten or something. That's what he looks like, a naked mole rat, Robbie Rotten Animorph with a Dusty Rhodes forehead skin blindfold over his long Tom Hanks ass looking head, wrapped up in a Nia Jax garbage bag unitard, complete with a giant bulging please shoot here pacemaker. What the fuck? I'm more afraid of Bowser than I am this nerd. Hell, I'm more afraid of Baby Bowser than I am this doofus. Hell, I'm more afraid of Dennis Hopper King Koopa from the Super Mario Brothers movie than this lumbering nincompoop. God damn, put them side by side, I feel like I'm watching The Parent Trap. Oh, and one more thing. He hardly ever says stars. Come on, Mean Gene. That's like if Hulk Hogan never said brother, brother. And you know what happens when Hulk Hogan can't say brother. He has to use the other word. And I'm sure we don't need a remake of that. <laughs> Thank God Donald Trump's a Hulkamaniac! I actually had to look up on YouTube to confirm that he even says it, and I guess he technically does. Stars. Stars. got some serious marbles in his mouth this time around and he sounds out of breath, which I guess makes sense given his ridiculous sideways Owen Wilson nose that I didn't even notice until writing this part. Wow. Good lord, that is one hell of a deviated septum there, buddy. Those are some mighty hostile nostrils you're rocking. He looks like he went 12 rounds with Balrog, which, given Capcom's predilection towards crossovers, might actually be canon. I honestly feel bad for the guy, like I should stop and let him catch up or hand him an inhaler. All right, is there anything else I want to mention? I don't know. Oh, here's a thing that pissed me off. When you're playing as Carlos in the hospital, there's a fanny pack to increase your inventory, but I, thinking strategically, chose not to pick it up and instead leave it for Jill. There is a long-standing precedent for this kind of thing in Resident Evil, so I assumed it still applied. But when I regained control of Jill, I was apoplectic to find that the fanny pack had disappeared. What the shit? And while I'm on the topic of inventory space, why don't I just go ahead and torpedo this video by giving all you commenters something to really complain about. Here's my worst opinion. An opinion so bad that it's actually 100% right and I'll stand by it till my dying day. Inventory management needs to go. Yes, I hear you, but inventory management is a staple of the series. It's been here from the beginning. It's the survival part of survival horror. Yeah, and it sucks. And it's always sucked. It's never been anything but a pointless pain in the ass. And it's especially egregious in this game, where half the weapons take up more than one inventory space as well as some puzzle items. Somebody explain to me, but don't really because it's rhetorical. What is the benefit of taking down Nemesis when all I get for it is an upgrade that makes my pistol take more space and thereby becomes a hindrance? If that's my reward, then it's not much of an upgrade or a reward. I was happier with the pistol that took up one space. It's like I'm being punished for beating up the nemesis. Which I guess makes sense considering he's so goddamned frail in this game, kicking his ass makes me feel like I'm the bully. This tedious back and forth of not being able to pick up shit is not scary. Silent Hill 2 is scary, and you can pick up as much shit as you want. Barney's hide and seek is scary, and you don't gotta pick up a goddamn thing except traumatized children. On a related note, I'm so damn sick and tired of running around looking for three of something. New rule for video games, don't waste my time making me find three of something. And if you make me find four of something, then may God have mercy on your wretched soul, cause I'm coming for ya, and Jill's coming with me. Whose bread idea was it to end the game with another repugnant underground lab 
flashlight fetch quest, just like the last game. It's literally called The Nest 2. Only here it's worse, because it's a less interesting, crappier nest this time. And if that weren't bad enough, my patience is already completely gone, because I'm still pissed off about the fanny pack thing. And, of course, it also has to be littered with these bullet sponge guys, because some fool at Capcom accidentally added even more stupid bullshit to the concoction. And then you fight a big stupid pile of shit that isn't scary, and Jill says a bunch of tough one-liners, even though she's supposed to be traumatized from the first game, but I guess they just dropped that without bothering to resolve it. And then you beat the game, and you feel bad, because the game is bad. Alright, enough. That's my not a review. Now it's over. You don't have to listen to me anymore. Tune in next time, or I piss and fucking shit myself over this fucking piss and shit. No way! That monster just doesn't give up! What? I thought we killed that thing! No. It's been waiting for you! Stars... He's playing with us. Carlos, do you think that it's unstoppable? It's my turn, bitch! Hey! Fuck this! Ruby! Ruby! Take the fucking hits!